exponential uh, negative k times uh, t. t is my time, which is this one here. Okay, close it. So, oh, okay, at least I got the first point right. Okay, good. Uh, then I'm going to copy this all the way down until I reach uh, 70. So you find that at the moment, the model is not very good. Right? That, that's my model. Those are the data values. <coughs> Uh, so what I do is to uh, then try to uh, minimize or, or, or the, the error, um, um, square error. Okay, if I have negative, um, sorry, equals. Well, I, I should take data value minus maybe this value, and then I square it. Okay, this is a square error, and copy it down, and. And my E here is defined as um, the sum. So something is wrong. I should square root it. Okay. And what I need to do is use the solver tool again. <coughs> Minimizing um, this particular cell okay, by changing this value here. And this is the result I get. Okay. <coughs> All right, so K is roughly 0 0.1686 uh, if we believe in this model, if we believe in this model. And we find that um, it's, it's not really very good um, because it, 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 at some points the, the, the model is not, too, not quite far away from the data values. So what can we do to, uh, to, to improve the model? This is the stage where we say we check with data and then we try to refine the model. Okay? <laughs> so perhaps uh, one thing we can do is, is, is to, to um, look at this, this term here, 206 minus one. Okay, um, the, the reason is that in the um, standard logistic model, it is assumed that the fractional rate of change, by fractional rate of change, we means, it means that the x dt over x, that's a fractional rate of change, varies uh, linearly with x. Uh, it may not be so. So what we can do to modify this is to um, assume or relax our assumption, make it a little bit more general, to say that the fractional rate of change uh, may not vary linearly with x, but maybe x to, the sum, to some power, say p. We can still uh, go back to our original model by letting p to be 1. It will, still, it will still work. So this is a little bit more general. So this is our general log logistic model. And if you do that, uh, then we get a solution like this. And we can again use the tool that we have uh, by varying the values of k and p to minimize e, and this is a result. It gets slightly better. All right? uh, so this might be a, a viable model, but again, uh, if you look at it, it it's still, uh, there are still some points that are not uh, very close to the, uh, the, the model itself. So maybe we can uh, further improve on it. Now, how do we analyze it? Another way to look at the model itself is go back to the equation again and see what you can do. Uh, another, uh, that, that's one way, that's what we have done. Um, but yet another way is to look at the data and see whether we can get some information from the data, what is actually happening around this region here. Now, <coughs> if we <coughs> estimate dx dt from the data, this is estimated from data, and plot dx dt against x for this set of data, we notice that we have points like this. I'm joining the points not because I say that they are it should be continuous or anything because these are data points. I'm joining the points to show that um, uh, to show more clearly the variation of the x dt against x, so that we you can see that it goes up and comes down like that, and then it goes up again and comes down like that, which suggests that <coughs> probably this is at around day 30. Uh, the model, the whole, whole, whole uh, 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 
SARS outbreak during that time could have been modelled by two logistic curves. Double logistic model. First part looks something like this with parameters K1 and P1. Second part, same kind of uh, equations with parameters, different parameters K2 and P2. So now we have four parameters P1, P2, K1, K2 to estimate from the data set. And uh, we can do that. And if we do that, this is the solution that we get. When uh, t is between 0 to 30, we have this model. You see, that's why I, I put 201 minus 206 minus 1 just now, because now if you look at it, this is the more general case. And then you have a different kind of, uh, uh, a slightly different uh, model for t bigger than 30. And these are the parameter values. And the reason why we put this value b there is because at the point t equals to 30, where's t equals to 30? Uh, here, we, we, we want to make sure that there is continuity. So this, this condition ensures continuity. <coughs> okay, so this looks um, uh, pretty good, I think. And in summary, let's walk through the, 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 the process again. So first, we have the logistic equation, logistic model. Then we have the modified logistic. And finally, we have the double logistic. Can you see improvement? of the model um, as, we, as, we, as we modify the model or refine the model. Uh, I can hear some people complaining. This is uh, just an exercise on curve fitting. Is, is this really modeling? modeling? <laughs> yeah. Um, but is it really curve fitting? Um, is there some reason for choosing those uh, 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 expressions or those equations? Um, actually, if you think about it, I have three points uh, to make as far as these models go. Uh, number one, uh, in the logistic equation, there is this idea of mass action interaction. So using a series of logistic equations, we are actually emphasizing that for the disease to spread, for there to be an outbreak, there has got to be contact between the susceptible and the infected. And that's the very nature of SARS. So the model is quite reasonable. Because if there's no contact, there's no spread. And that's what the model says, and that's what we know physically is happening. That's number one. Number two, the logistic equations also tells us that in a closed system, in a closed community, um, there is a limiting value. In this case, 206 in that particular community, we assume that that is a closed commu community. I know it's not a very uh, good assumption, but that's the best we can do uh, given those uh, circumstances. And in that closed community, there is a limiting value. And that has impact on the control measure, which means that if we isolate the community, it will not spread outside, right? Because it's closed community. Uh, <clears throat> which means that isolation, quarantine becomes a strategy for controlling the spread of the disease. And that was exactly what took place. Now, and the third point, when we go back and look at <coughs> the double logistic model, at this point here, in fact, why is it double logistic? In the first case, first uh, uh, model, uh, it looks like the disease is going to, or rather the spread is going to taper off. But then it went on again on the second chain of outbreak. If you recall, sometime along, somewhere along this 30-day this, uh, time period, I think, um, it was discovered that at the hospital, there was a super infector going around infecting the rest of the people. Right? Um, of, course, of course, not intentionally. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that was what happened. There was a super infector discovered at that point that started off another chain of outbreak. So again, this model tells us something about that. So in some sense, um, it's not really curve-fitting because uh, mathematical modeling uh, uh, um, has different objectives. It can be predictive, like you want to know what the weather is like tomorrow. That is more like a predictive kind of model. Or it can be a little bit more retrospective in nature. You want the model to be able to help you explain why or how certain events take place. So in that sense, in that sense this particular model is retrospective in nature. 